Hello Nigate fans, 2D Zelda games were part of many people's childhoods, with it having far-ranging effects on players and developers alike. So let's take a look at some upcoming indie games in the genre. I've covered a number of these in recent videos, such as No Place for Bravery, where you play as a grizzled warrior searching for his daughter and it has a souls-like slant. There is No Light was also mentioned, where you're also searching for your child, this time fighting against a cult and some oldritch squishy monsters, and of course, we have to mention the long in development Radio the Universe, which simply looks gorgeous and should be releasing pretty soon. For more information on those, do check out these videos, but let's get into the list. We kick off with a very retro looking title in Elementalist, reminding me a lot of Blossom Tales The Sleeping King, where you messed up and doomed the world, so it's up to you to fix it. As shown, you have a variety of elemental powers at your fingertips, from fire, water, nature, wind, lightning, and so on, which are used in combat, exploration, and puzzles. If I were to guess, based on the description and images of the Steam store page, it states that there are 8 elements, 8 biomes, and 8 dungeons, so it's very likely that you're going to be rewarded with 1 element per dungeon, using these to gain access to new ones. Absolutely love the look, and if it's anything to go by, there are quite a number of awesome pixel art titles in this video to look forward to. I'm the world's greatest treasure hunter. Uh, I will be, anyway. Speaking of which, the girl from Akanya looked awesome and was a title which I touched upon during its Kickstarter campaign. Playing as an aspiring treasure hunter and her capybara companion, delve into the dangerous forest and ancient temples, seeking relics and gems. I'm not afraid of you. Stand aside. Of course, there's combat and puzzles, but our heroine can use a number of shaman dances to alter the world in a number of ways, changing the weather, commanding nature and unlocking secrets. While I do have my gripes with the whole concept of a treasure hunter likely stealing from the natives, putting that aside, the whole two character setup does look like a neat twist. We've never cancelled the Volksfest before. And we never will. Rogue Heroes Ruin of Tassos is another action-adventure game, but this time including up to 4 player support, some roguelite elements, and even base building, which to be honest, does look pretty good to me. It's further down on the list since it is perhaps not as much of a classic Zelda take, but the procedural generation of dungeons and co-op focus could be pretty neat. There are multiple playable classes, and I hope plenty of upgrades, with elements such as farming and fishing which should make this more of a modern take. But the pixel art does look great and I'm looking forward as well. One of the awesome titles in development is Crystal Story, not that one that you can find on Steam, but do check this out via the itch.io link below. It's a little bit of a genre measure, being primarily an action-adventure title, but it does show off rhythm, puzzle, and even some very earthbound looking combat, together with classic Zelda combat.
just looking at it, you might see some Undertale inspiration, and to me it does indeed give off some of that same vibes. The best part of this is that it is being developed in episodes, with part 1 named Awakening being available right now at a name your own price, so do let me know if you check it out. I've mentioned Mayhem in Single Valley before, since I do like the combination of the 2D pixel art characters and the 3D environments, where something radioactive has gotten into the water, which turned animals feral. It looks like a nice combination of combat, puzzles and platforming, and the best part is that there's a free prologue demo to try, so go give that a look if you're curious. Prisma Light is another title which has popped up in a number of these videos, since I was enthralled by the look ever since I saw it. As some of you pointed out, it does look quite like Hyperlight Drifter, which to me is high praise for the quality of the art. Play as a young boy investigating a mysterious event in your small town, which seems to be somewhat dimension warping, and our main character and his friends find themselves fighting against monsters and such. This developer has been fairly active on Twitter, posting updates and looks at the game, and it does look like it's shaping up, although we still do not have a release date. The PR person for Ocean Heart did reach out to me, and having taken a look, I was pretty impressed. This has you exploring an archipelago, searching for your missing father, following in his footsteps among the ruins of a flooded kingdom. While you're doing that, take on contracts to slay monsters, delve into ancient dungeons and unravel the mysteries, where the trailer teases that you need to find Ocean's Heart, which does have me very intrigued. Digging a little deeper, this developer did also make the free 2D Bloodborne adaptation Yarn Town, which is totally worth checking out. And there's a wonderful narrative trailer coming up as well, so I'll be back in a little bit. That's me, Tilia. You're probably wondering how I got into this situation. Well, first off, this is a game, so you can't hold me entirely liable for my actions. You're part of this too, you know. The short version is, my dad left our hometown to hunt pirates a while back. And now I'm trying to find him and figure out what went wrong. I followed his trail. I sailed across the sea, explored a vast wilderness, unraveled pirate conspiracies, discovered powerful magical artifacts, and also attended a birthday party for a dog, which had more to do with pirates and thieves than you'd think. So now I'm exploring the world, learning to wield various weapons, and I even use magic. I'm racking my brain solving puzzles in ancient dungeons and brewing potions to help me survive tough fights. Like the one where I started talking to you. As much as I want to find my dad, this game is full of side quests and hidden locations that we're going to be distracted by. Leaving the main path often leads to huge areas, where we can spend an hour exploring, finding upgrades to my weapons, beating dungeons, or fighting this dude. 
And as much as I'd like the side quests to be simple and straightforward, they always end up complicated and twisty. You go in just hoping to make a few crowns by helping out the town guard, and you end up stopping our theft. And the secrets of this world? That's a whole separate thing to explore. Which again is going to sidetrack me from finding my dad. But this game is full of them, and I can't stop you from trying to find them all. So how did I get into this situation? By going on a big adventure. As we go through this together, I might join a tic-tac-toe championship or impersonate a piano tuner, break thousand-year-old curses. It'll be lots of fun, so I hope you join me soon. If you're at all nostalgic for the 16-bit action-adventure titles that would not be out of place on an SNES, then look no further than Hazelnut Bastille. This looks 16-bit spectacular, where a mythical sword has chosen you, and you have to explore a mysterious new continent in hopes of regaining something that you lost. Why has the Dawnthorn, nature's own blade, chosen you. I cannot say there is hope, but that sword is the might of heaven. It knows the way through the ancient vaults and is equal to any foe. Let it guide you to the place this all began and steal back our future. It had quite the successful Kickstarter campaign, absolutely wowing with the look, but I do have a feeling that they might have bitten off more than they can chew, announcing a whole other companion game, more on that later, where the initial release was targeted for October this year. Still, it does look fantastic and pushes all those nostalgic buttons, although I do hope that a widescreen trailer would be made sooner rather than later. A title which impressed in demos during the Steam Game Festival is Outrider Mako, a very Japanese-themed entry where you play as a career for supernatural creatures, obtaining and delivering items in order to earn your way to get back home. On top of gorgeous pixel art, this has an interesting jumping mechanic which can be used both on enemies and on environmental objects and still has a 2020 release date, although I won't be surprised if it gets pushed to next year. Very excited to share Moonshell Island with you, since I chanced upon it on Twitter and fell in love with the look. It's another pixel art action adventure title, but it's set on a beautiful tropical island where you need to save the island from something called Nomsters, which appear to be giant sentient produce. Looks great and fingers crossed this releases sooner rather than later. The biggest news regarding the previously covered Unsighted has to be that it got picked up by Humble Publishing, who is absolutely killing it, since this sci-fi action-adventure game looks stunning and we get a closer look at the gameplay in this new trailer as well. It looks sleek and stylish, with some impressive bosses shown off, although the action does seem to be rather guns focused, but it does give off some hyperlight drifter and cross code vibes. Before it's too late. Alma, wake up. We need you. 
I've mentioned Turnip Boy commits tax evasion before, but don't run away. This got a new trailer that's worth a look. It's super adorable, where you play as a troublemaking turnip, going about your merry way solving puzzles, harvesting crops and such, when you suddenly get smacked with a massive tax bill. It has a sense of humour, contrasting capitalist swine with a literal pig enemy boss with some satirical takes on a modern tax system with multiple endings depending on the extent to which you evade tax. It got picked up by Graffiti Games who are quietly becoming another player in the space and seems pretty firm for 2021. It seems like the look of Mystica continues to evolve and change every time we look at it, but an action-adventure game with a procedurally generated open world will always appeal to me, so fingers crossed it will turn out well. Thirteen for Thirteen isn't bad with pixel art titles, with the title to break their streak being Last Moon, utilizing a beautiful hand-drawn art style that has some impressive animations as well. It's an action-adventure RPG where you are the Lunar Knight, fighting corrupted monsters to save the Last Moon from a powerful curse from an evil mage. very classic action-adventure combat with leveling, a skill tree, and even what looks like a Hollow Knight-inspired rune system as an analogue to the charms. There's a day-night cycle and the ability to help rebuild the village, so it does seem very ambitious. Another non-pixel art title is Terra Pulse, coming to us from a Brazilian developer and sets in the post-apocalyptic ruins of what used to be Rio de Janeiro. Search for your missing mother by delving into the tropical monster-filled jungle with a capoeira-inspired combat system which looks impressive. There's also a base camp building system where you can recruit characters and upgrade your equipment, so another no-brainer title for this list. Another absolutely beautiful pixel art entry is Ada Tainted Soil, where you explore an open world, fight enemies and bosses while searching for your missing sister. This developer is from Poland, so there's something a little bit off about the descriptions of the website and Kickstarter page, so do excuse me if I get some details wrong. But it does have RPG elements where you unlock and upgrade abilities, an alchemy system where you brew potions from ingredients gathered, and of course, the fast and fluid combat. The world is also handcrafted but procedurally assembled together, which does feed into the open world concept, and I'm interested in how this would work for an action adventure game. looks pretty awesome and theoretically has a January 2021 release window, but we'll have to see. I covered Hunt the Night when it had its Kickstarter campaign, which was successful, 
And while it had an initial planned release in October 2020, COVID and the ambitious improvement in the pixel art did push it to next year. So do bear in mind that this is an old trailer. It's a dark, gothic action-adventure game where you play as a member of an ancient order sworn to hunt down massive, galaxy-threatening bosses. On top of weapon-based combat, you can also give in to the dark side and utilize a number of shadow powers, so it all looks great and it's another title which I'm looking forward to. I think one of you pointed me towards Totemic, so whoever that is, Thank you very much. This pixel art action adventure title looks stunning, once again being published by Humble, where you play as a woman with an enchanted axe that can absorb the powers of her enemies. It seems to be set in some sort of frozen north where evidently things are very blue in this game. Not much else has been detailed so I'm waiting for more information. Another Kickstarter success story is Aether, one of the most impressive pixel art entries in development. This is an open world game, so perhaps more akin to Zelda 1, taking place in the dying days of a human civilization where you play as an adventurer, seeking to unravel the secrets of the past as you are guided by a fallen god. First things first, how great does this look? Everything from the character, enemies, environments and backgrounds are just so well done and really cohesive, but the RPG elements are the most interesting part. There are over 21 skills from weapon specialization, mining, wood cutting, magic and more with crafting, enchanting, alchemy and other systems in play as well. So very ambitious, but perhaps not quite Zelda, but a very promising entry nonetheless which I'm hyped about. Hashtag Blood is an awesome cartoony entry set in a high school where a teenage hockey player has to fend off vampires and demons that have invaded the town. If it looks somewhat familiar, it's because this developer is primarily an animation studio having done work on Nick Jr and KKO with this looking very much like a 90s cartoon that would air on Cartoon Network. Since we last saw this, development has been progressing smoothly with this developer showing extensive development videos on YouTube so it's still coming and we'll just have to wait. Very excited to share this title as well since Zealots is a dark gothic entry where you play as a fallen priest of the orthodox colony on a holy mission to cleanse the heretical paganism from the land. While I do think that crusades and holy wars have no place in this world, just leave people to their own beliefs, this does give off a very similar vibe to something like Blasphemous 
exploring the extremes and messed up aspects of religion. In a land where true belief can lead to physical manifestations of deities, fight your way through this twisted world. This also mixes 2D sprites and 3D environments to great effect with awesome deliberate combat and non-linear progression. I think that enough has been said about Eastward at this point, appearing time and again in videos like this, but it's high on the list simply because of how great the pixel art looks. The two characters set up again is interesting, factoring into things like exploration and puzzle solving with delightful towns, strange creatures and even stranger people to encounter and it does look like a very fascinating world to explore. Still no release date, but this developer did mention in October that development is wrapping up so fingers crossed 2021 will finally be the year. Speaking of pixel art, the 8-bit excellent companion title to Hazelnut the Steel covered earlier is titled Dawn Thorn, named after the mythical sword that you wield in that game. I believe that this is a prequel to the 16-bit game, but in all honesty, I do actually prefer the look of this. It really does look like a Zelda game, only replacing Link with another protagonist, with 9 dungeons, a sprawling overworld, fun NPC characters and secrets to uncover. Big fan of this and cannot wait, with the latest update on the Hazelnut Bastille Kickstarter being that the alpha build of Dawn Thorn should be going out to backers soon, so it may still be a ways off. Zelda Like a Fox Tunic has long been in development, first being revealed in 2017, but there has been a playable demo which was made available during the most recent Steam Game Festival which I did check out. It's a classic action-adventure game where you explore this mysterious island, but not much more has been revealed since then. I enjoyed the demo and it does feel pretty good to play, so I'm still looking forward to this, but I do believe that it's a solo developer on this project, so it might take some time. Surprise! Creature Keeper does keep appearing on my Monster Taming Games videos, since yes, it does have monster taming elements but plays like an action adventure game, so of course I'm really looking forward to this. A strange sickness is spreading across the land, corrupting the creatures and turning them hostile, so it's up to our hero and his creatures to save the world. It takes inspiration from Zelda, Rune Factory, Diablo, Path of Exile and Ragnarok Online which are some of my favourite franchises in gaming, so this immediately appeals to me. There's a whole bestiary to fill out, a cooking system for preparing your creature's favourite foods, a pocket garden system where you can grow said ingredients while on the go, and some of the most fluid and impressive action-adventure combat that I have ever seen. 
this developer has been giving steady updates on Kickstarter, so it's an active development, and while it did have a tentative March 2021 release window, I'm not sure if it'll make it, but still super excited for this, taking the number one spot. To see more of the big picture, check out these awesome videos and I will see you after the jump.